Hey y'all, so today we're working with Simplicity Pattern 8598. I think that's what it said. But I actually use this pattern for any of the prior corsets or bustiers that I have made in the past. Um, I decided that, you know, I'm always talking about pattern hacking. So I figured let me actually just slow it down and show y'all what pattern hacking actually is. So first things first, you want to pick out the pattern. And then you want to get your... Whatever pattern paper you use, I always use the, I think they call it packing paper from Dollar Tree, which, you know, it's not a dollar anymore. It's a dollar 25. So make sure you bring that extra quarter. <laughs> but anyways, um, because it's on a roll, you want to make sure that you tape down that paper so that it's not folding and rolling on you. Because there, trust me, that is very annoying. After you do that, you want to use what is called a tracing wheel. And it's funny because I've had the tracing wheels since I started sewing, which was eight years ago. And I only started using it for real within the last two years because I just never really needed it. So you want to take your tracing wheel and trace on the line of the size that you need. Make sure you look on the back of the pattern so that you can. Okay, quick pro tip. Don't just look at what the pattern says the size is supposed to fit go down to like almost the bottom of the back of the pattern and it says finished garment measurements. That is where you want to really base your size on because it can be a size eight, but once you finish, it'll be a size 12. So you really want to make sure that whatever size you're using, the finished size is going to be the size that you need. After you trace that around, you're going to remove it and start to just retrace the line that you just used the tracing wheel for. The purpose of the tracing wheel, if you don't know, it has little jagged edges in there. So as you're rolling that wheel over the paper, it's making little indentations. And it's, I mean, if you're not pressing hard down on it, it's going to be hard to see. But that's why I go in right after with a pen so that I can go ahead and make that line visible. So um, also make sure to trace the notches which is which are the little small triangles you'll see in different areas of the garment notches are so that you can make sure each part of the pattern is lining up in the correct place because you know maybe you'll move up the pattern a little bit and now it's going to mess up the whole fit so that's what notches are for so after i go in which i didn't show it i go in and i usually trace around with the permanent marker but right here i just cut it out and now i'm about to make the new pattern so now this is me hacking it so basically pattern hacking is me taking a pattern that's already made and then i'm just making a new pattern out of it usually it's me trying to use a pattern for the size or me trying to use the pattern for the actual style that it is so this one i was making a heartbreak style top so right here you'll see me adding the zigzags and i'm just measuring with both my ruler and my measuring tape so that all the zigzags are the same width and height excuse me also for having my arm in the way in certain spots you know i just didn't check the camera angle but yeah so after i do all of that like i was saying earlier i go in and i use a permanent marker so that you can actually like really see it and make sure you label all your patterns so that you can use them again you're not going to keep doing this i promise you you do not want to make this pattern again so label it and keep it and i thought of even sometimes um, which i haven't done it yet but you can go and get these patterns laminated so that they can be kept for the long haul the only thing about it though i would say lamination would probably make it harder to use pins but yeah and then on this side, you see I'm tracing again so that I can get the other side of the pattern, which I actually didn't have to do this part. I was just trying to see if I can make it two heartbreaks that come together, but that actually didn't. It wasn't needed. So after realizing that it wasn't going to work, you know, I'm just going ahead and finishing off the pattern. And then I check to make sure that it's all lining up all the right size, et cetera, et cetera. And after that, I'm going to take this pattern because now I have a new pattern and I'm going to cut it out. So that's essentially what pattern hacking is. I got a pattern that's already been made and I made a new pattern with it. And that's something that has helped tremendously in getting the correct size 
and trying to figure out patterns that I've never done before, like this one, for example. And what I like to do is I like to make samples or I call them shells sometimes. So I make a first shell or a first sample of something I've never done before so that when I get to the real fabric, there's less room for mistakes. Because, you know, once you cut the fabric, it's kind of, you know, you're kind of done for unless you have a lot more fabric left. Um, so right here, I am flipping it out just to see how it turns out. It's looking lovely right here. I was really happy at this point. So from here, I am finishing it up just to make sure I know how to do it once I get to the real fabric. And I was trying to show it to you all. What I did was sew the edge of the zigzag portion to the other side of the corset and then flipped it and then I do a top stitch over that portion of zigzag, which is why I have it pinned like that and it looks kind of folded. So that's exactly how I did that. So this is the finished corset with the actual fabric. Thank you all for watching and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next videos.